I want to show you how to make an auto maintenance schedule in Google Sheets. So this type of auto maintenance schedule, um, I prefer it over maybe some other types just because if you look down at my uh, second sheet here, what this displays is a list of all of the services that need to be completed. So everything that's due. And this is a dynamics uh, table. So if I come over to my first sheet, and I update, for example, checking the brake fluid should be done weekly. But if I change this to uh, where it hasn't been done in a year, you're going to see it becomes due. Notice that highlights in red. Okay. And if I come over to my table, now checking the brake fluid is on my table here. So this table updates dynamically. And uh, I don't know, to prove this point even more so here, we'll. throw in a date, you know, say everything was done on the 1st of 2001, and drag that down. Notice everything is due, and my spreadsheet has changed. So I could print this out, and it would tell me, uh, you know, everything that needed to be due. So I like this type of style of spreadsheet uh, for that reason. So to do this, so we're going to start out with a blank spreadsheet. And I'm going to start just by copying this data over because all it is is a copy and paste. And this just lists my services and my service schedule of how often things need to be done. I have my vehicle listed there as well. I'm just going to paste the values only. All right. And then we'll add some formatting in. Now, if any of these things, if you're unsure of how to do any of these things, we have videos that uh, go over each of these things. Um, like formatting and how to copy and paste and copy and paste special things like that. So um, if you're unsure of how to do these things, make sure to check out some of our other videos. So put in our service date and then due date. Hey there. Okay, so the service date, that's just going to be whatever date we serviced the service the piece and we'll say or service the vehicle so we'll go ahead and put in here that we serviced it you know uh, I don't know 10 1 2017 and we'll say we did full service on everything on that day that copied not the way I wanted it to there we go and then the due date that's going to be different based upon how what our service schedule is so to create this we're going to use a formula I'm going to go equals and with this it's weekly so I'll just select the date and then say plus seven that will add seven days so now it's taking whatever date I have and adding seven days and all of my services that are weekly I'm going to want that on there so I'll go ahead and paste that and that's just adding seven days to whatever my date is. The monthly and the rest of them, we're going to use a formula called e-date. So I go equals e-date, select the date, and then I'll hit comma, and I put in the total number of months I want to go past that date. So monthly, I'm just going to go one month, okay? I go that monthly, I go through there, and then on this one, quarterly, I'm going to select my date, and go every three months. Notice um, now it's just adding three months to whatever date I have in to begin with. So it's a it's a pretty easy formula to use, you know, semi-annually as you can guess. We're gonna do the same thing except we're gonna add in, you know, six months. So I'm gonna continue to add these dates based on their respective uh, service schedules. But uh, once I have all these plugged in, I'll show you how to do the conditional formatting. Not because, I mean, we have the, we already have the, we already have the list down here that tells us what to do. So really, we don't need the conditional formatting. But um, I, I'm, the reason why I want to show it to you is because if you wanted to create a different style of maintenance sheet, um, you could do that. And the conditional formatting can make them handy. So um, I'm going to just finish these here. So equals each day. This one's two years. So months. There. 
All right. So, um, yeah, just to give you an idea with that conditional formatting, the reason why we may want that is here's another example of a, a different type of auto maintenance schedule. This one doesn't list due dates. It just uses conditional formatting to highlight. So you can see this service is due, this service is due. So it's a little bit different. You could create something like that using conditional formatting. So, all right. Um, now to create conditional formatting, all you have to do is uh, select your dates. You know, we'll just select this whole column and click on format. Come right down here to, oops, format. Come right down to conditional formatting. And then right over here on the right, it gives us our rules. We're going to say if cell, so right now it's cell is not empty. We want to do cell is, if it is B4, I believe. So what that's going to do is it highlights it if it's before. In other words, if we've passed the due date, then we want to highlight it. And none of these we've passed the due date on. But if we come in here and change one of these, for example, we say 10-1-2016, you'll notice that this is going to change. And now we have a, uh, a highlighted cell. It's telling me that that's due. So that's, that's a really simple way to make your maintenance spreadsheet. But if you want to add in that uh, additional sheet that basically will pull out everything that's due, you're going to have to take the next step here. So let's add another sheet. Well, you know what? Just for uh, simplicity, simplicity, I'm going to create that same list, but I'm going to do it right here instead of in another sheet. So let me show you what I've done on my other spreadsheet here. So basically what we did is we created a query of that data that was saying, hey, give me back all the data that is after a certain date. And um, if you're not familiar with queries, that's OK. But uh, to, to add this query, I'll, uh, you're going to use the, uh, a new function that you may not be familiar with. It's just equals query. Okay, and you'll use the language that the language that's used is uh, it mentions it here. It says Google Visualization API Query Language, but it's very much like SQL or SQL. If you're familiar with um, that data language or, or that query language, and, and if you're not, we're going to make this really easy. You don't have to be. So uh, this can be a, a brief introduction. But basically, first we need to select our data, and that's really simple. The only tricky part or the only thing that's different is we're going to have to use these little brackets here. So I plugged in that bracket right there. You can see that bracket. So open bracket, and then I'm going to just select my data. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to do it by the columns there. So I'm going to select my data, and then you need to do a close bracket. Okay, and then comma. Now the next thing we want to do is our query. So this is where we start typing the query language. Now, first thing you need to know, you're going to type it in quotes. And basically, you need to, when you're querying data, what you're saying is you're telling the system what to select. So of all this data that we have, what do we want to actually pull out? So we're going to select. So just type in select. And for this example, we're just going to say everything, which that's not what that little asterisk wildcard means. OK, you can learn more about that if you just Google, uh, you know, asterisk in SQL or SQL, you'll be able to find out more about that. But we're going to select everything where, and then here we just designate the column. So we have five columns in here. So we're going to say where column five is less than due date now, and that'll pull our current date, and then close parentheses, and then the one, which what the one tells us is that our first row, which is this right up here, is our header. So that's what the one tells us. If we had two or three rows of headers, then we would put two or three respectively in there. Um, then we close off parentheses, excuse me, we close off that parentheses and hit enter. And now it gives us our headers and it gives us um, all the details that we want. It basically pulls the row out. And you see the only one that it pulled out was check transmission fluid. Okay. Now you could see if you had multiple vehicles, you could do this same process with multiple vehicles. You would just need to list out every one of these services again. So if, you, and, and let me just show you what I mean. So if I copied, we'll just copy these three. Okay. So if I just copied these three, 
we'll change the vehicle here. So 2009 Honda Odyssey, let's say. And it's still done weekly, okay? Um, all right, we want these to show up as dates, though. So we're going to format that as a number date. And now I'm going to change one of these to, um, we'll say this was done a year ago. So now that should become due. Uh, oh, we need to copy and paste our... There we go. And notice right as I added that, it added it in my query right here. So as I add these dates, as I update these dates as to when my service is done, it will tell me, or it will take them off. So um, let's say I go and I check the coolant pressure or the coolant level. Now that's taken off my query. So it helps me keep track pretty easily. Um, if you wanted to not display the, like for example, maybe you don't want to display the service schedule, you just want to know what the vehicle and the service is that needs to be completed. What you can do is you can come um, in your query, which displays in our first cell right here. You can say, instead of selecting everything, you can just tell the columns you want it to select. So column one and column two. Okay, so now, oh, that wasn't really what we wanted, but we can go and play with it again. We'll say column three. And you just separated those. I just separated those by commas. Okay, so you can get kind of fancy and select specifically exactly what you want to select. And it, in fact, if you learn more about these queries, there's a lot you can do with this data. But um, that's just kind of an introduction, gets you, gets you started. And that would be an easy way to create an automated schedule.